Okay, just having some thoughts here and I wanted to uh, share kind of an analogy that I came up with. I've been thinking about the reason why it was, so, I'm thinking about why it was so hard for me to take so long to leave the church. And you think about, you know, I, I did have opportunities to learn. I remember back in 2006 when some friends of mine were watching The Godmakers and uh, learning and, and, and some of them were leaving the church and they were learning about, you know, they're reading anti-Mormon literature and I had an opportunity then, you know, they wanted to talk to me about it, but in the church we're just so trained to treat anything that's against our beliefs as coming from the adversary. Anything that's not approved by the church, if it's not put out by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, then it it may be anti-Mormon doctrine and we are strongly discouraged from viewing, reading, watching, listening to any anti-Mormon material. And <clears throat> I also th think about those other things though, like, you know, I, when I came home from my mission, I remember hearing about guys that are coming home from their missions and leaving the church. And I'm like, I, the thought always was, why, why would you spend two years of your life and then just throw it all away, leave the church? It's like this investment. You know, I, I looked at my mission as like, it was something that helped me to say, look, I'm not going to waste those two years of my life. That was a lot of work. And I don't care whatever the anti-Mormon literature there is, whatever news there is, I'm not going to listen to it because I don't want that. I don't want my two years of service to have been in vain, right? So I'm thinking about this, you know, this kind of came up with this little analogy. So we have our, our testimonies, right? And our testimonies are something that we prize and we cherish and we nurture and we feed our testimonies from the time we're very young. Uh, you know, we were taught about our testimony. We share them in church and every time you share your testimony and you feel the spirit, it builds your testimony, it strengthens your testimony. And, you know, you go and you, you know, you, um, you, you're not supposed to um, turn down a calling and you, get, you enter into a calling in the church and you serve and it builds your testimony and you give a talk in church and it builds your testimony and you share the gospel and all these different assignments that you get in the church and everything's like faith promoting and testimony building and we think a lot about this prized possession that we have that is our testimony and it's like kind of taboo in the church to even doubt your faith because it shows weakness in your testimony. It's like, oh, you know, if um, you know, if you're if you're doubting things, or maybe you're doing something that's against the uh, the rules. Even people that even people that you know um, drink Coke or Pepsi, and I think that's changed recently. But maybe ten years ago, it was like, oh, they drink Coke, you know it shows a weaker testimony. So those people with the most powerful testimonies are those are, you know, those really faithful, strong people and they're in the, you know, they're the 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 bishop or the relief society president or the elders quorum president. Or they have these positions where it's just like more demanding and they must have these ultra stronger testimonies. And I'm thinking about how the stronger the testimony that you have and the more that you commit yourself to the church, the harder it is to allow yourself to listen to anything that would be contrary to what you've come to believe. Because you don't want anything to damage your testimony. We keep them so guarded. They're so highly valued in the church, our testimonies. So I liken this kind of to um, a a sales a sales floor at a dealership at a car dealership. So when you go to a car dealership, you know they're 
the, the salesperson's main goal is just to get you into a sales office. You're out there on the lot, you see a car that you like, and you show some interest and you think, oh, maybe we want that, you test drive it, and then the next step is for them to get you in to the sales office to discuss pricing. Because they're never gonna tell you, yes, this is the price, and let's go write it up. You know, it's 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 always like, uh, yeah, let me see if we can do that. I'll talk to my manager, and we'll see. So let's say you, you know, you you have a you found something. It's thirty thousand dollars is the most you can spend, and it's priced at thirty three thousand. And the sales guy out there says, yeah, we might be able to work with you on that. You know, we might might be able to get it down to thirty thousand for you. So they get you in to the sales floor, and you sit there, and then he goes and says, well, let me go talk to my manager. He goes to the back office and, you know, he comes back 20 minutes later. Well, we can't do, you know, it's too low. 30,000 is too low for us, but we can do, you know, 32.5. Uh, we can't, you know, that's, that's too much for us. What if you could do, you know, then they start talking about the interest rate. Maybe we could lower your interest rate a half a percent, you know, make the payments better for you. Well, well let me see what I can do. Goes back to the sales office. 30 minutes later and and what these guys are doing back there is they are just shooting the breeze with whoever they're not actually talking to a sales manager they they know that the more time that you spend in the sales office the more likely you are to purchase the vehicle on their terms so they come back and oh no we can we can give it to you for for 32 and you know your interest rates gonna be a little bit higher since we had to come down a thousand Whatever, I, I don't need to go in, in further, but I've, I've sat in a dealership when I was young and I didn't know this stuff. I sat in a dealership for three hours one, try, one time because initially the dude told me that he could sell me a truck for a certain amount and I was gonna hold him to that. But ultimately, after three hours invested there, they couldn't do it. And I read online and I learned about these tactics. They want you in, they want you in that sales office for as long as they can possibly have you there because the longer you're there, the more invested you are and the less likely you are to bail without coming home with a car. So think about that. It kind of relates to the investment that we make in our testimonies and our service in the church. We go on a mission, we give a talk in church, we, we, do, we, give a, uh, you know, we pay our tithing, that's 10%, that's a huge investment. Uh, every calling that you get, your home teaching, I guess they call it administering angels now or administering whatever. But these are ways that the church uses to get you invested because the more invested you are, the less likely you are to want to leave because the more investment, the more you've given your life to this way of thinking, to this this commitment, to this this. Uh, this view that you have, this outlook that you have of what life is and what the afterlife is. And the more you serve in that capacity and spend your time investing your time in this, the le not only are you less likely to leave, but you're less likely to even venture out and think about anything that would say that everything that you've done is was a waste of your time. You don't want to believe that. It's so hard to believe that after 30 years or 40 years of doing the same thing and investing all your time and energies into something that that could have been in vain, that it was all for naught. So, so anyway, just uh, just some thoughts. Just thinking, you know, these are some of the things, you know, that uh, that the church does to to keep people in. It makes it really hard to leave because you've valued your testimony for so long. You've given, you've given so much of your time, your money, your efforts to building, strengthening, and holding this testimony that you're just less likely to listen to somebody when they have anything contrary to say. Anyway, I know you guys already know this, but just wanted to share that with you. Thanks for listening.